This is a guide to electric fences for livestock. Hope you learned something and hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. Here's some examples of electric fence insulators. This one is a screw on type for a T post. A screw on type if you're using a re rebar is your post. A clip on for a T post. This one goes on the back side of a T post. And finally, a clip on for the front side of a T post. Now, I'm going to show you a couple different types of electric fence. Here's an example of some low tension electric fence wire being used. My neighbor put this up to prevent his bull and my bull from fighting. It is a pretty sorry fence that needs replacing someday. This is a poly tape with a conductor woven through the tape. And this is a poly line with the conductor within the line. I think generally the tape is better because the cows can see it a whole lot better. The only advantage of the line is that it's a little bit cheaper. With both the poly tape and the poly line, it's pretty easy to insert a gate. You just tie on this spring loaded handle. Here's an example of some high tensile electric fence wire. Unlike the poly stuff, this you actually have to tension until it's tight. You can do a single strand, double strands, a double strand with the ground, or lots of other different combinations. These are screw-on porcelain insulators, which are good for wooden posts. We've got a three-wire electric fence that's protecting some small trees that need some maintenance. I figured while I'm repairing the fence, it'd be a good opportunity to take some video of how to work with high tensile electric fence. First, I'm replacing the sorry plastic fence post you see with T post. I prefer the insulators with the screw on back versus the one that just clip on. For this fence, the top and bottom wires are hot or electrified and the middle wires are ground. The clip on insulators seem to somehow always get knocked off, but these screw on tight, they never come off. High tensile electric fence is joined by sleeves that you crimp on and then you tighten the fence with a ratcheting mechanism. This is the crimping tool. I really wish the handles were about a foot longer because it's pretty difficult to, to get a good squeeze on. I usually use two sleeves for each connection. The ratcheting mechanism tensions the fence, but you want to take up as much slack as you can before actually hooking up the mechanism. This tool makes it very handy to operate the ratchet, but a pair of channel lock pliers can be used in a pinch. Looks like I've wakened some poor spider from his nap. I've developed a feeling of how much tension to put on the wire, mostly from the experience of over tightening it and breaking it. You can also put one of these springs in line with the fence, but it's been my experience that they're only really necessary for fences that are really long, like over a thousand feet. There's two types of fence chargers. One is solar, which I'm working on now. This one I believe has a bad battery. I think the chargers run about $200, but the battery is only about $35. It's nice to see something that's actually made in America. I'm just cleaning the corrosion off the contacts, installing the new battery, and then putting everything back together. My assistant in the lower right hand corner looks like he's a little bit bored with all this. Looks like a new battery fixed the problem. I also have a charger that gets plugged in. If you have power available to the fence, I think this is a much better option. You want to hang the charger somewhere that gets full sun. 
and now I'm going to install a grounding rod. One of the biggest problems with the electric fence is having a bad ground. This is just a clamp that you use to connect the wire to the grounding rod. As you can see, the ground is so hard, I can barely get a screwdriver to go into it. This is some aluminum insulated electric fence wire. For all of it's pretty inexpensive. And here I'm connecting the conductor that goes from the grounding rod to the fence charger's ground. For this fence, to prevent having grounding problems, I made the middle wire of the fence a ground. So even if the soil is super dry and the cow is not really conducting, as long as the cow is touching one of the hot wires in the middle wire, it will feel the fence. And now I'm connecting the hot part of the electric fence charger to the hot wires. There's a jumper already installed that goes from the bottom wire to the top wire. Okay, now everything's hooked up, the charger's working, no more cows are going to bother these trees. I hope you learned something about electric fencing. Please comment, hit that subscribe button, and have a great day. Thanks for watching.